Graphing quadratics by factoring. There are three main steps to graphing quadratics by factoring. First is to factor, then we're going to find the vertex and use the y-intercept. By doing these three things, we'll have enough coordinates to graph a parabola. Our first example is x squared minus 6x plus 8. The first step is to set y to 0. This will allow us to find the two x-intercepts, if there are any. So we have a situation where we're going to use product and sum, a product of 8, and a sum of negative 6. 8 factors out to 1 and 8, and 2 and 4. We're going to use 2 and 4 to factor. So this becomes x minus 2, x minus 4, and that equals 8. So we have successfully factored x squared minus 6x plus 8. The next step is to separate and solve. So we take our first bracket, separate it, solve it for 0, and our second bracket to the same value. So either the first bracket or the second must equal 0. So x will equal 2 or x will equal 4. And what we've done at this point is we found our two x-intercepts. We found 2 and 4 along the x-axis. To find the vertex, we know that it's somewhere along the axis of symmetry which is directly between our two x-intercepts. So to find the axis of symmetry, we take the two roots, add them together, and divide by two. And that will give us three. So this is the value of h from the vertex. So we now know that h is three, but we don't know what k is. We also know that the axis of symmetry equation is x equals 3. These two steps go hand in hand. So we're going to sub in h for x and set y to k. So now that becomes 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 8 equals k. 9 minus 18 plus 8, and k is going to equal negative 1. So now we know our vertex is 3, negative 1. And I'm just sketching that. That's not to scale at all. Now, in our equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, c is the y-intercept. So c in this case is 8. The coordinate is 0, 8. So again, I'm just sketching that value as 8. We're going to identify the mirror, and that mirror is also going to be 8. And to find it, it's equidistant from the axis of symmetry. So this distance from the y-axis to the axis of symmetry is 3. If we keep going 3 more, we'll now become equidistant. And so this coordinate now is 6, because 3 plus 3 is 6, and 8. The y-intercept is 0 and 8. And that gives us enough coordinates to graph. We only need three, but this gives us five. And there we go. And the title of this slide is Two Distinct Real Roots, because our two x-intercepts are different and distinct. Okay, and that is the first example done. My second example 
is titled Two Identical Real Roots. The same steps. I'm going to tidy up the equation and set it to zero. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals zero. I recognize that's a perfect square trinomial. So to factor it, it's x minus 3 all squared. I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to say x minus 3 and x minus 3. So that means when I separate and solve, I'll get x minus 3 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals 3 or x equals 3. We have two identical real roots. Again, I'm just doing a sketch. So that value is 3. It's also the axis of symmetry. And I'll prove that right now. To find the vertex, I add up my two roots and divide by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That is h. And that's also the axis of symmetry. So my vertex is 3 and some sort of value for k. Same as before, I'm going to sub in h for x and set y to k. So that becomes 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 9 equals k. 9 minus 18 plus 9 and k equals 0. So the vertex is 3, 0. Well, the vertex and the roots and the axis of symmetry are now all the same. C in this case is 9, so that coordinate is 0, 9. I'm going to plot that. Again, just sketching. So from my coordinate to the axis of symmetry is 3, 3 on the other side. And that coordinate is now 6, 9, because 3 and 3, of course, is 6. I only have three coordinates, but that is enough to graph a parabola, a vertex, and two other coordinates. Two identical real roots. So this is a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomials will always sit on the x-axis and open up or open down. My next example, no real roots. So I'm going to set y to 0, 2x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. And when I go to factor it, I realize it's not factorable. Now, I can still graph it, although I can't really say that this is graphing a quadratic by factoring. I'm going to use a piece of the quadratic formula to find my vertex. So my x value, or h, in this case, equals negative b, so that's negative 1, all over 2a, so 2 times 2. So that's going to give me negative a quarter. So in this case, my h value is negative a quarter. Still don't know what k is. I'll leave k blank now that you know where that sits. So I'm going to sub in h for x. So it's 2, negative a quarter, all squared, plus negative a quarter, Brackets are your friend when you're subbing in a negative value, just so you can keep it all straight, and set it to k. So this is 2 times 1 16th minus, I'm going to convert that now to, I can 
convert it to sixteenths. So that's negative four sixteenths. And convert my two to sixteenths as well. And that'll be 32 over 16. That equals K. Multiply through and make a fraction. So that becomes 2 minus 4 plus 32 all over 16 equals K. 2 minus 4 is negative 2 plus 32 is 30 over 16 which is 15 over 8, which is 1 and 7 eighths, and that equals k. So 1 and 7 eighths. c in this case equals 2, so that coordinate is 0, 2. Now I'm going to sketch it out. Putting my vertex in of negative a quarter and positive one and seven eighths, it's approximately there. Again, this is a sketch. My C value is two, so that's really quite close. Using my axis of symmetry, my mirror is there. And I could figure out an exact value, but just for the sketch, for the purposes of sketching it, you can see that it sits above the x-axis, so there's no real roots. In this case, we would have imaginary roots. And this is a topic, imaginary roots are a topic for when the quadratic formula is introduced. So in this case, no real roots. Sort of a special case here, difference of squares. My first example, will be x squared minus 25. I'll set it to zero and I'll quickly factor it. It's a difference of squares. Square root the first term, square root the second, add and subtract. And you go a little faster here. I'm solving for both sides and you'll see that the signs flip. If the h value will be five plus negative five all over two which becomes zero. When you sub in h for x, you get zero squared minus 25 equals k, and k equals negative 25. So your vertex is zero, negative 25. Your c value is negative 25. So the coordinate is zero, negative 25. So let's graph that much information. So we have our two roots, negative five, positive five. We have our vertex of zero, 25. I'll go off the chart there. And C is also negative 25. So you can see that a perfect square trinomial has its roots equidistant from the y-axis and the y-axis is your axis of symmetry. It will always have two distinct real roots. They will be opposites of each other and that is true for every difference of squares. My last example to do is the reverse of the one I just did. So I'm going to set y to 0, negative x squared plus 25 equals 0. There's two ways to approach this. You could factor out the negative sign, and you'll get a traditional looking difference of squares. Or you can simply reverse it. So that becomes 25 minus x squared equals 0. You'll get to the same place both times. Here, when you factor, it's five minus x, five plus x. Here, you can get rid of the negative sign by dividing both sides by negative one, and you're left with x squared minus 25 equals zero. And that'll look very traditional. So x minus five, x 
plus 5 equals 0. And in both cases, your roots will be x equals 5 or x equals negative 5, just like our last example. So there we are on the two fives. Your axis of symmetry is identical. The only difference is C in this case is positive 25. I'll put it way up here. And instead of opening up, it opens down. It is still x equals 0. You have three coordinates to graph. So to sum up what I've just done, there's a case where you have two distinct real roots, two identical real roots. So this is a perfect square trinomial and no real roots. No real roots is not factorable. Thank you for watching.